Good afternoon once again. Uh, as I said before, my name is Femi Akinfolari, and I would like to welcome you all to the Wema Bank um, 2021 Investor and um, Analyst Conference. Uh, so just as an update, the presentation that we will be showing today or sharing with you today has already been shared with um, everybody. Uh, it was sent out earlier today. We had also published the financials in the dailies earlier in the week. So uh, all this information is already in the public domain. Uh, at the end of the presentation, we will be taking Q&A and you'll be required to just put your questions into the chat box at the, um, in, in the Zoom box. So we'll take the questions from there and make sure that all questions are responded to um, by the um, management of the bank. I will now like to hand over to the managing director, CEO of the bank, Mr. Demola Debiche, to take us through the presentation itself. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Femi. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Women Bank um, Full Year 2021 Investor and Analyst Conference Call. My name is Ademola Adebiche, the Managing Director of Women Bank PLC. And I'm being joined today by my colleagues, uh, Maruf Oseni, Deputy Managing Director. Wale Akile, Executive Director of Corporate and Southwest Business. Wale Ajimisimi, Executive Director, Lagos Business. Emeka Obiago, the Executive Director, the North and South East Business. Tunde Mabaoku, the Chief Finance Officer. Sylvanos Eneche, the Chief Risk Officer. And Kumilai Falola who supervises our marketing, communication, and investor relations function. During this call, we will discuss our full year 2021 business performance and cover the outlook for 2022. The statements or comments uh, on the outlook are going to be based on expectations as of today. Actual events and results could differ materially uh, due to the several risks and uncertainties in our environment. The bank continues its strong trajectory, growth trajectory, as we'll see during the course of this presentation. We continue to push on our ambitions, our corporate goals. We are going on assets based by over over the last three years, while increasing our profitability by 108% uh, in 2021. Our digital play is making, is defining the markets. Our improved financial performance is supported by efficient balance sheet management. We have seen strong growth across all parameters, including earnings, interest income, and non-interest income. Our efficient ratios have improved significantly. We're also seeing strong growth in profitability. We were intentional about driving down costs and improving our, our profitability ratios. Our cost of funds declined by 24.9% to about 3.25%, and our cost to income ratio improved to 78%. Uh, from 83.8% last year. Despite the very challenging environment, uh, we recorded a very decent performance. Uh, this is um, largely based on the fact that uh, we improved uh, the efficiency on our balance sheet. Our loans, we improved, uh, there was a growth in our loan portfolio. Uh, originations and monitoring practices and risk management have improved significantly. And we continue to use data 
analytics to improve our decision making. During the year, we also had changes on the board, and this was in line with the corporate brand, uh, uh, the, 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 the Kama rules, the new Kama rules. So we had quite a number of changes on the board. And this you can see from the financial statements that were published. And this is basically just to engender uh, diversity to ensure that uh, we continue to have um, diverse experience also on the board. The digital landscape continued to be the uh, focus, especially because of our digital um, heritage. And we continue to improve our capabilities and offerings in this space. We have revamped our mission and vision statements. We've also revamped, uh, we've also come up with a new corporate strategy, uh, which aggressively focuses on the digital play. The strategy is focused on eight pillars, uh, basically because we know that uh, these eight pillars are very key to the for the growth of the bank and also to position ourselves as uh, a place of a future to work to work in. Data, 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 data is the new oil. We continue to focus on data analytics. Um, we continue to focus on our people. Our people are the greatest assets that we have. We also continue to focus on our back office. It is one thing to be digital on the outside, but it's also important that we are digital all through so that we can improve customer experience. We continue to do all this and uh, a lot more. And we believe that uh, this will uh, eventually lead to our aspiration to be the dominant digital bank in Nigeria. At this point, I would want to uh, hand over to Tunde, our Chief Finance Officer, who will do a deep dive into the numbers and the facts behind the numbers. Thank you very much. Tunde. Thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Tunde Mabanku the CFO of Wema Bank. As Femi um, had said earlier, we had sent these slides. Um, so I will not be doing slide by slide, but I'll just give you a brief overview. The detailed financials are in slides 11 to 23, where you can do a deep dive. However, I'll just talk on four key points um, very quickly um, for you to note. Number one is around funding. And our strategy in 2021 was around pricing before growth. Bearing in mind all the things we saw within the regulatory landscape around debits and what have you, it was important that we focus on keeping our cost of funds down while working on our deposit mix. And good enough, we're able to get some good deposits at good pricing that enabled us to drop down our cost of funds significantly. So year on year, we grew deposits by 15%, but we're able to keep interest expense almost at the same level. And on the digital side, as you can see from the slide, we got a lot better in alert, in USSD, in agency, across our platform. In fact, in a number of them, we grew over 100% year on year, both on transaction count and on transaction value. And really our plan still resonates around growing aggressively and dominating the payments and digital landscape through our organic growth and through our partners. The second point is on the loan book. And the loan book of the bank remains very um, fairly diversified. We don't have concentration in any of the sectors. Um, we grew loan year on year around 15% and NPL numbers below 5%. Um, we took significant hit on impairments in 2020. So in 2021, we were able to moderate the additional impairments um, taken as the loan book also got better in, in quality. The third point I want to quickly mention is on revenue and expense. If you do the deep dive in numbers, you will see that revenue grew um, year on year, largely on the back of 10 billion growth in interest income. We also had a two to 3 billion growth in fee income. There's still some work to be done on fee income, especially on the digital landscape. But as we get better with stability, as we get better with using insights on data and analytics to drive customer engagement, we expect to see our fee income on our platforms get a lot better. And the last point quickly is around capital. You will recall uh, last year, um, we came up with a two-stage process in driving and raising capital. First was to do a scheme of reconstruction, to reconstruct the shares of the bank, to get it a lot efficient from 38 billion units to bring it down to 12 billion units. 
That process took a while, but we concluded it um, two weeks ago and technical suspension on our shares was lifted last week. So the reconstruction process is done with. The next part of the process is now the right issuance that is expected to start in the next one or two months. So after reconstruction, we then go ahead, get the final approvals from um, the regulatory authorities, and then we'll drive and start um, the last phase, which is the right issuance of 40 billion Naira. But in the meantime, we've continued to accrue um, to retain earnings, as you can see from the numbers, shareholders funds are now inching close to the 70 billion mark. Um, dividend yield, dividend payment also improving. Um, we've doubled the proposed dividend that is going to um, shareholders for their approval at the AGM. So to conclude, if you look at the numbers, improvement in PBT of almost 100% year on year, return on equity keeping strong at 17%. Um, and really we expect in 2022, these numbers um, to continue to drive um, bearing any major shocks um, to the economy and to the industry. So I will pause here. Um, what we'll do now is we'll open up the floor for question and answers so that for those that have gone through the um, detailed slides and then we'll come back um, after the Q&A for the MD to close, um, um, conclude the presentation. Thank you very much. So I'll hand over to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mabanku. Um, you can submit your questions in two ways. So you can either type your questions in the Q&A section or you can uh, unmute and ask your questions directly. Once again, if you have any questions, kindly type them in the Q&A. I can see um, someone has already done that. Um, thank you for the presentation. Please, what sectors were responsible for the increase in MPLs and how is this being managed? That is Mr. Olubun. Uh, the second question is, although cost to income ratio declined year on year, what is the bank doing to further reduce its cost profile? Uh, can we take those two questions together? The first one being, uh, what sectors were responsible for the increase in MPL and how are we managing uh, the increase? And then another one around cost to income ratio declining year on year. And um, what are the initiatives the bank is introducing to further reduce its cost profile? I can see a number of other questions coming in. But let's just take those first two. Okay, let, let me start um, with that and then I will yield um, for more questions. And please note, I saw Mr. Okoni Boye's hand is up. So you can take the physical ones at the next batch. Um, regarding the question on cost to income um, ratio, a number of key drivers, I think first and foremost for us, <clears throat> revenue growth. So we saw um, increase in net income year on year, um, outpaced um, the increase in narrow terms in the operating expenses. We've largely kept OPEX, at OPEX growth below inflation. Um, one of the one or two key areas where we've seen growth are largely on the statutory expenses and that is expected. So if we grow balance sheet by 50%, Amcon levy will grow by 50%. If we grow deposits by 100%, NDIC premium, will almost certainly double by 100%. But one of the key drivers still remain around technology and managing those costs, continuing to digitize processes like the CEO mentioned, we've digitized to the outside, let's digitize on the inside, end-to-end -end straight through processing. So you don't need to carry papers from initiation to posting um, is done um, on the system. We are also looking at our branch network, physical branches and how to migrate them to alternative solutions. We've also seen um, what has happened to the price of AGO and the price of power um, in the last three to four months. So again, is to look at the branches, look at the network, what can we do um, to further manage or drive those costs? So largely through technology, largely through initiatives around energy 
and again working with contractors, vendors on certain bulk purchases. So where there are concerns around inflation or FX, if you know we are going to buy X number of computers, X number of assets, some you quickly buy and lock in on the cost, lock in on the pricing early so that you're not subjected to um, changes in inflation or changes in exchange rates. Um, regarding the comments around the NPL, if you go to the slide, we did a further breakdown um, of the loan book. I think that was on slide 15 or 16. Um, can the presenter please quickly go to the slide? And there you will see um, the breakdown of the key drivers to the NPL numbers. It was a combination of NPLs within the general, which is personal and personal trading, and NPLs um, from some of the more commercial traders. But largely what we've done is to keep a close eye on those customers. A number were affected by um, where there were changes in exchange rate or changes in, um, um, in pricing and it's, it's affecting the ability to supply or the ability to execute um, certain contracts. But no major um, sector, we will say, yes, it was really the key uh, primary driver. It cuts across a number of the SBUs. Thank you. Moderator, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, there are quite a number of questions in the chat box now, but can we take Mr. Okuri Oye, whose hand was up earlier? Does he want to unmute his mic and ask his questions before we go back into the um, Q&A box? Mr. Okuri Oye. Okay, let's just proceed with the other questions now. Um, Mr. Abdullahi Mukhtar says, thanks for the presentation and congrats on the results. How did the bank's restructured loans perform? Is the increase in NPL coming from the restructured facilities? Uh, that is number, that's the first question. Uh, Mr. Vibuti Sharma says, Team Wema, congrats for the successful 2021 uh, excellent results. Please talk about MPLs and how are you managing your FX allocation? Uh, should I take one more so you can take three together? Yes, please. Um, the CRO is okay. on standby for the question. Okay. Excellent. Uh, another question is, at what point do you think the fresh capital injection will be concluded. So three questions, one on capital injection, one on a MPL and asking how are we managing the FX allocation? And then one finally asking is the increase in MPL coming from the restructured facilities? Okay, um, we'll get the CRO to talk on the MPL questions to give additional color. Um, the CEO will come in to speak on capital and capital comments and also on FX allocation. Um, so CRO, Sivanos NHA. Okay, um, good afternoon all and thank you once again for joining the call. Uh, my name is Sivan Seneche and just to say that um, the increase in the NPLs were not necessarily from the restructured facilities. Indeed, what the um, CBN did was by granting some regulatory concessions, um, they allowed some of these businesses that were hard hit during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic to kind of weather the storm. Um, what we saw, however, was that um, once the impact of the um, movement in the currency um, devaluation happened, uh, a number of traders found it difficult to meet up with their commitments. And so we took a more prudent view and of course, we classified some of those accounts and you would see that um, as you deep, take a deep dive into our account, you'll find out that the key changes came from uh, the trading, uh, the general commerce where we have some of those accounts. Also, we found a number of um, individuals and groups were challenged because of um, a decline in their revenue during the pandemic. And so we also took a prudent view to classify those. But by and large, um, I would say that um, largely as a result of uh, regulatory imperatives and also some of the concessions that were granted, um, a number of businesses actually 
um, weathered the storm. So I believe um, that really is where we are. Uh, we continue to take a prudent view, and that's why you can see a growth in the NPLs today. Um, so CFO, do you want to issue on uh, managing the FX and locations? Um, the MD will take yeah, both. Let me come in there. Yeah, thank you very much, Silvanos. Um, Mr. Sharma, thank you for the comments. Uh, I think in terms of um, FX allocation and um, capital, let me talk about capital. We have just concluded uh, the reconstruction and that we are uh, about to commence uh, applying for the capital raise. We need a number of regulatory uh, consents uh, from various uh, regulators to be able to, to start this process. And we reckon that uh, based on our experience on the reconstruction, uh, we reckon that uh, we should be ready to hit the market by Q3, all things being equal um, in terms of the capital. So basically, uh, impact of capital will probably be felt in around Q4. Um, in terms of, I would believe that uh, with this, a number of the ratios will improve. Uh, even the things around um, FX allocation and all that um, would also po possibly uh, improve because of that. Um, in terms of FX allocation, uh, this is a tough one. Um, we're all managing this as an industry. And a number of efforts that the central bank is uh, also uh, making to ensure that um, we improve on the uh, FX uh, available for, for business. Um, we are continuously inching, inching up in terms of FX allocation. But of course, we also know that we have to continue to grow the, grow the business. So as we grow the business, the, the more the FX requirements, you know, and all that. But one, one thing that we've done as a bank over the last one year is to try to um, deepen our, uh, our exports, financing of our exports uh, customers, uh, businesses that uh, have export implications, so that uh, the exports proceeds coming from there can be used to uh, manage uh, requirements of our customers in terms of FX. And that is, um, that is ongoing, that has uh, yielded a lot of uh, results. Uh, in addition, uh, the RT200 uh, program of the central bank, it's also coming at the right time. Uh, we're all working very assiduously to ensure that uh, we position ourselves uh, to be able to uh, meet uh, the objectives of the RT200 uh, set by the Central Bank of Nigeria. So th those are the kind of things that um, we are uh, uh, we are working on. As we speak today, we are engaging our customers. Uh, we are profiling also our customers, uh, both existing and then um, uh, prospects, so that we can then increase the exports and its potentials um, of, of our customer base. Uh, with a view to reducing the impact of having to go to central bank uh, to to raise um, to, to 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 buy FX for our customers. Thank you, MD. Um, we still have quite a number of questions. Uh, Mr. Abdullahi Mutar comes back in to ask, uh, could you please give us a sense of the bank's preparedness for Basel three? When is CBN expected to mandate banks to transition to Basel III and reflect the standards in their reporting? Uh, Mr. Jude says, were there any significant impact from the COVID-19 uh, pandemic on the bank's operations in 2021? And then uh, someone else asks a question around, regarding balance sheet size growth, what timeline does WEMA have in mind to achieve a sizable asset size. I wonder what a sizable asset size uh, is. Maybe you can clarify that. Uh, finally, I want to apologize to Mr. Wale Okunri Boye. Uh, his mic was muted. That's why he couldn't ask his questions. Uh, could we take the first three questions and then land on Mr. Okunri Boye's questions? He has, uh, I think, three questions also. So the first question, when will Basel III transition happen? The second, were there any impacts from COVID-19 in 2021? And the third, when will, 
where my bank had achieved a sizable asset size. Thank you. Okay, CRO, can you take the Basel questions? And then I will come in after. CRO. Okay, let me start um, pending when the CRO comes on board. I will start with um, COVID and growth, and then we'll land back on. And then we'll land back on comments around Basel. Femi, I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can. Please okay. continue. Okay. Um, impact of COVID in 2021 um, largely um, was muted. We didn't compare to 2020, with, that was the main year where we had um, a series of lockdown. Um, I think slowly in 2021, we are almost back to normal. Um, from the point of view of operations of the bank, I think we are largely back to normal. All branches, SBUs were open. Um, in the head offices and larger locations, we had to do a mixture of both remote and um, physical work. Regarding impact of customer business, I think like the CRO had said earlier, some of those that had um, certain concessions or what have you in 2020, we slowly eased them off those concessions in 2021 and they were able to do well. We did not have any major strain. Um, regarding customer obligations or exposure. So largely 2021, I believe um, we had gotten better um, both as an economy and industry um, and as a bank. Regarding the question around sizable growth, well, um, it's always good to put in context. For us really, our targets, our strategy in the next three years is to be the dominant digital bank in Nigeria. Um, now, what does dominance mean? Dominance is not necessarily a function of balance sheet size. While we strive to drive and achieve year on year double digit growth of balance sheet size, for us, it's in all of those transactions. You enter an Uber ride today. At the back end of it, Uber is powered by Flutterwave that is a partner to Wema Bank. You want to pay on Airbnb. Um, today, at the back engine is Wema Bank. You are paying your toll fees. At the back engine is Wema Bank. You are paying um, fees to, lake, to state governments for taxes and what have you. At the back end, it's powered by a WEMA wallet or a WEMA facility. So what we want to be is to dominate that payment landscape at the back end and eventually at the front end. You will not see WEMA, but it's WEMA that is powering a lot of those transactions. That for us is the future. Dominate payments, dominate transactions, and you'll be everywhere. And then with that, with data, with insights, you can then do a lot more customer engagement. But regarding Naira and Cobo, family, we've crossed the 1 trillion Naira mark in total assets. The pushes um, before the end of the year, um, deposits will also have crossed that mark and will continue to inch. Once we bring in additional capital, that gives us room to scale up the loan book and do a lot more. But the future is digital and we want to dominate digital through payments um, across the industry. Um, is NHA back to take the question on Basel three? Maybe we can circle back to that, uh, okay. but we can go ahead with uh, Mr. Okuri Boye's questions. He's got three. Uh, he says, what does your capital adequacy ratio look like on the Sorry, I... Okay. Um, can I speak, um, Femi, is it, um, am I audible? Please proceed. We can hear you. Okay. Please um, proceed. So Mr. Okuri Boye, um, with regards to your question regarding Basel III, reporting and um, yes, uh, the central bank came with um, some guidelines about September last year. All banks have been aware mandated and indeed we're doing a parallel reporting with the current um, reporting templates um, for another six months. Um, it is expected that all these um, key indicators will be reported in every bank's 2022 accounts. Um, so yes, um, Basel III implement, implementation is ongoing. Um, all banks have already started parallel reporting and the uh, CBN is also looking at some of those uh, key indices that we're reporting on. Things like the, the liquidity ratios, um, a deeper dive into them. Um, also the risk treatment of 
our um, credits and also regulatory capital. So indeed it has started and Wema Bank is, um, we, are, we are meeting those um, reporting deadlines. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nature, but please uh, hold on a bit because that was Mr. Abdullahi Mukhtar's question you answered. Uh, Mr. Okunri Boyezon is actually, what would your capital adequacy uh, ratio look like under Basel III? What would your leverage ratios look like uh, under the same Basel III? Do you want to take that or can the, the chief finance officer take that? Okay, um, with regards to our um, the regulatory ratios on the Basel III, we are still compliant. Um, indeed, um, as you may well know, um, part of our, um, for national banks, the regulatory capital is about 10%, the capital adequacy ratio. Uh, but again, in preparation for growth um, under a stress scenario, that is the reason why we feel it is necessary that we raise additional capital. And um, like the CF, CEO and the CR, CFO might have mentioned already, we expect that this um, additional tier one capital should come in sometime in the third quarter of this year. Um, so that will prepare us for um, growing the balance sheet and growing the books. So yes, um, even on the Basel III, we are meeting all the regulatory um, benchmarks. Excellent, thank you very much, um, Mr. Inichi. Um, there are three more questions I think we can take together, two from Mr. Okunri Boye and one other one. So the first question is, what are your views around interest rates for the rest of 2022? Uh, and then what portion of your investment securities portfolio is CBN, um, SPE, special bonds, I think, SPEBs? And then the last question is, in Wema Bank strategy plan, does the bank intend to expand into other non-banking financial services? I think this is a question around, uh, is there a plan for a holding company? Okay, I don't know if um, the CFO is back on. So CFO, if you want to take these questions. There you are. Yes, I am. Um... The questions, I'll quickly take um, two of them and then the strategy one, I'll yield to the MD. Um, qu questions around SPEB, if you if we are referring to the special treasury bills in our portfolio, um, that was in 2020. We have around 80 billion of special bills out of liquid assets of 350. So 80, I would say 20, 25% um, is those special bills. Um, given in 2020. Um, for views around interest rates in 2022, I guess the expectation uh, which we have seen was we, start, we will start the year slowly and then there'll be that spike um, in, or there'll be that continuous growth in interest rates. The regulatory authorities will try to keep um, rates down, but we are juggling a number of balls. Um, there's the FX rates, there's inflation, um, and there's interest rates. So it's difficult to keep all three down. At the end of the day, one um, will have to inch up. And unfortunately, we've seen impact of inflation. Now with higher energy uh, prices and what have you, it will affect inflation. I would think invariably, outlook for interest rates will be one where interest rates remain um, elevated um, from the second quarter of the year. And we've seen that trending up. Um, I would think that will remain as we also lead into what will be an election year in 2023. So our outlook for rates is one that rates will be elevated between now and end of the year. On the larger question around strategy, I will yield to the MD CEO. On questions regarding the capital adequacy and other ratios, we had put some disclosures in the presentation and also in the account where we actually did a special section on Basel III, which we also share again with um, the, um, the people on this call. But I'll yield to the MD on the strategy questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Okuri, Okuri Boye. Uh, basically, our strategy, um, it's based on um, organic growth and inorganic growth. Um, in terms of uh, the way we exist today, um, 
Yes, I mean, one key thing that is very important for us um, is to improve our capital base. Improving our capital base will allow us to do quite a number of things. Um, in the first instance, uh, the digital play for us is very key. And we believe that for us to deepen the markets or deepen our business in that space, uh, we would need to uh, allow a lot to really, 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 really um, uh, grow. And then doing that, um, one of the things that is possible that is really on our plan is basically to try to get the best out of our lot rather than uh, having it uh, been subsumed at the bank at the moment. But again, I mean, talking about um, what Femi talked about, about old co and all that. Yes, it's not about going old co. Uh, it's not a fad. But we believe uh, that we'll focus on things that will improve shareholder value for us. Uh, yes, if old co uh, we're able to do, pull it through. Uh, because of, we cannot pull through an old co at this point in time with our current capital structure. So that's why I said a lot of things is uh, dependent on the capital structure. Um, but largely, we're going to be working. I mean, we're going to be going that direction. Uh, it's still going to be a longer digital play, ensuring that uh, we were able to go into other areas, uh, income making, uh, that uh, speaks to our digital uh, aspiration. So basically, that's what I would say at this point. Um, talking about uh, inorganic growth, um, it's on the table. Uh, there are various discussions going on. Uh, but of course, we will we'll, uh, inform the markets once um, we have a very firm position. Now, in terms of, um, again, talking about expansion and growth, um, we are in partnership. Uh, of course, you probably know we are in partnership with Bank of Africa. Uh, we are in partnership uh, with a number of other parties outside of the space. We are a national bank, but we believe that uh, we can also tap into uh, the African markets, especially on the back of um, the ACTFA and the PAPS, um, so that uh, we can take advantage of uh, what is going on. Digital play is beyond just oper operating in your geographical uh, region. It's uh, operating outside even of your geographical uh, region and in a very, very uh, creative, creative way. So in the interim, we are having partnerships across Africa to be able to take advantage. But on the long run, yes, um, we will be able to look at a more structured uh, approach to, 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 to doing this. I hope I've uh, been able to answer your question. Thank you, MD. Um, we have quite a, we still have quite a number of questions, so I will try and get through them as quickly as possible. Uh, Fumilai Abdulrahman wants to know uh, what is expected for MPL ratio in 2022 and beyond. I think the chief risk officer can take that. Uh, Mr. Okunri Boye has come back in to ask that he saw a CBN fine on cryptocurrency and can the team provide more information around this fine? Uh, and then Mr. Abdullahi Mukhtar has come in again to say, Considering the uncertainties in both global and the Nigerian markets and the recent bearish sentiments on Nigerian bank equities, do you foresee any risk to a successful capital raise? So three questions uh, around MPL ratio going into the rest of the year, uh, cryptocurrency, fines, uh, and then how successful do we think the capital raise will be? Mr. Okilano, we will come to your question last. I saw your comments around finally being able to get into the session, and we really uh, like the fact that you made an effort to come in. We'll come to your questions last. Please, can we take okay. the three questions? Okay. Um, well, I believe that some um, guidance would have been provided uh, regarding our revenues and probably our profits. Uh, but with regards to NPL, we continue to maintain a very conservative stance in terms of even loan growth. And so um, what we do continuously is we keep uh, managing our um, loans to ensure that we do not grow past uh, the regulatory ratio. Yes, the environment is tough, 
but we do not expect there will be any significant spike to our MPO ratios come the end of the year. Indeed, um, the business environment seems to have opened up a bit this year, save for the crisis uh, brought on by the uh, Russia-Ukraine crisis. Um, despite that, we feel that um, a number of sectors have opened up again. The hospitality business is back on track. And um, despite the challenges in the North and some of the agricultural growing sectors, we still see that there's been a good harvest. So that has um, been able to tamp down um, what we've seen in terms of growth in food inflation. It's there, but we feel that all in all, um, the NPLs will continue to remain uh, below the regulatory threshold. Um, maybe I'll just take the question on the CBN cryptocurrency fine. Yes, indeed, um, there was a cryptocurrency fine for a number of banks. What happened was that the CBN had um, banned the um, banks, even banking those that were into cryptocurrency. And what happened was that if for any reason C CBN had identified um, a particular trader banking with any bank, they would find any bank that has any such name. In our case, um, there was one of the traders that um, had an account with us. It wasn't an active account, but the mere fact that we had that account in our system, we were fined. Um, so I think that answers the issue on the cryptocurrency. But since then, there has been a concerted effort by banks all around. So we've come together, we've shared information and details. And so there's no way that any one trader or um, group of traders circumvents this. If you are flagged in one bank, your accounts will be closed in every other bank. Thank you. Sefo, do you want to take the question around um, uh, the bearish sentiments on Nigerian bank equities? And then what do we expect for MPL ratio going forward? And finally, I think maybe the last question we'll be able to take the one from Mr. Olatunde Okelano. Are we later likely to go uh, beyond the national banking license? Thank you. Okay, um, I just attempt at some, and then we'll yield um, to the CEO on the larger strategic issues. But I think on the capital, it's important to point out that we are doing a rights issuance to existing shareholders. And what has been done is to have done some early on engagement to get everybody on board. And I think um, with the improved numbers, impressive results, doubling of dividend yield, um, shareholders are aligned and they've given their commitments um, to participate in the process. So once we get all the final regulatory approvals, um, we will commence on um, the right issuance. Yes, we are mindful of the overall economic outlook, um, but given the performance and the expectations for the future, um, we believe that um, interest and expectations are aligned. Um, I saw a quick comment also related to that on capital adequacy. Capital adequacy um, will keep adjusting as the bank scales up. But what capital adequacy measures is your capital divided by your risk-weighted assets. So as we grow our loan book, as we expand, um, now we're above 1 trillion naira in total assets, loan book of almost 500 billion. We expect um, that slight dip in CAR as we continue to scale up. So we'll keep accruing to capital through retained earnings, and you can see the growth to 70 billion this year and through additional capital raise. So once we do those two, then you, you see capital adequacy numbers um, again spike up and, and ramp up to um, the comfortable levels. But it's important to mention that the minimum required for a commercial bank with national authorization is 10%. And WEMA with CAR or 15, we are still significantly um, ahead of that. Um, Femi, I don't know if we can then yield to the CEO for any final comments or I think that's just something. I would, I would like to crave your indulgence, Mr. Bamidele Ogunusi has been, his hand has been up. Maybe he can be the last question that we'll take before yielding the floor. Mr. Bamidele Ogunusi, can you ask your question? Okay, I don't think, maybe he has dropped off, I'm not sure. Maybe we can hand over to the MD CEO now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Femi. Uh, 
uh, I would uh, like to thank uh, everyone on the platform uh, for joining us today uh, on this uh, conference call. It's been quite um, it's exciting to have you uh, on. And that also uh, shows that from the quality of the questions asked, shows uh, your interest in the growth of the bank. Uh, we will continue as management to continue to see how we can raise the bar. Uh, the digital play is very hot for us. Uh, we'll continue to push this. A lot being a digital platform, we'll continue to play a very important role here. Uh, I choose the word platform, uh, not a digital bank, uh, very carefully, uh, because platform, it's the way to go. And uh, we are pushing uh, very hard to push towards uh, being a platform. And the platform basically allows you to do quite a number of things across, across different verticals and across different segments of the market. So we're going to be providing that. And they were looking beyond just even beyond even Nigeria, uh, but of course within the confines of our license. Uh, and as I said, we're going to be having a number of partnerships across across the continent um, to be able to take advantage of the ACTFA, the PAPS uh, payment platform. Um, in terms of um, any national license or going to be an international license, again, this will be driven by business uh, imperatives. Uh, opportunities. And as I said, we continue to have engagements um, uh, on a daily basis on the opportunities that may exist uh, in the inorganic space. Yes, our aspiration is to be a systemically important bank. And uh, of course, you know, capital forms a major, major plank to achieving this. Uh, even at that, we continue to look at uh, ways, creative ways to ensure that uh, we create value for, for our shareholders. Uh, we are quite excited. Uh, it's tough environment, but in the midst of that, there are opportunities that will continue to push, push, push on that. Um, what are the likelihoods of um, success for capital raise? Uh, I think the CFO has addressed that. Uh, we're optimistic, we're engaging our key stakeholders, and uh, we believe that uh, in due time, we will be able to uh, cross that bridge. I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, this afternoon. And um, our AGM uh, uh, will, be, uh, will be fixed in May, and uh, we will be able to uh, do quite a number of things uh, from there. Thank you very much, and I would like to hand over back to the uh, moderator at this point. Thank you. Thank you, MD CEO, and thank you everybody that has been able to join us today. Have an excellent afternoon ahead. Thank you.